cruising is just boat work in exotic locations. It's a saying that I've talked about before on this podcast. And a spoiler alert, it's definitely not my favorite. But is there actually indeed some truth in it? Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Today I'm talking about why sometimes, anyway sometimes, this boat work in exotic locations is actually a good thing. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Lunatech, makers of the hydration spray bottle, odor-free dishcloth, and self-cleaning washcloth. Lunatech offers practical gear designed to save water and reduce waste. A water bottle that doubles as a garden hose? A dishcloth that doesn't get stinky? Yes, please! Visit lunatechgear.com to learn more. Use code BOATGALLEY to save 10% on everything. Lunatech, innovative gear for your outdoor adventures. And yeah, let's talk about cruising. That's definitely an outdoor adventure. Hello from the boatyard in exotic Deltaville, Virginia, where the hardware store is first class. The grocery store is a distressingly far walk away from any water access. If you're keeping track of us and our boat projects, you will understand that this is the fourth June in a row where we have been in a boatyard. Great. Awesome. Yes, we've done some good cruising in between. We took Calypso to the Eastern Caribbean. We took Mischief to the Bahamas. But still, aren't we done with all this extensive work yet? We're close. I promise we're close. We're only out for a couple of reasons this time around. But whether you consider Deltaville exotic or not, the point remains that here we are in a different place than we were last year doing boat projects in a boatyard. We've actually come to realize over the past 30 years of owning Calypso that we definitely do better work when we're hauled out and in a boatyard. Frankly, we don't love just doing boat work at anchor. We'd rather be snorkeling or hiking or exploring the land or something. If we have issues, major issues like that, Generally, we'll stick around and and wait until we get back to someplace or go to someplace that has a boat yard, pull the boat out, and deal with it. The first cruise that we did with Calypso, we actually pulled out in Trinidad for, I think we were out for a month, doing some work on the bottom and painting and that sort of thing. There have been two major exceptions to this do big projects in a yard, though. And maybe this is where the term boat projects in exotic locations tends to come from. For the past two years, as I said, we've done two different cruises, one on Calypso and one on Mischief. And each one of those cruises involved a project that we knew before we left we needed to get done and we wanted to do it when we were gone. We had fully intended to get each of these projects done in the boatyard before we left. But both of these projects got shoved for various reasons down the priority list as the weather got colder and our need for ourselves to get south pressed harder. In the fall of 2022, we left from the Baltimore area in the Chesapeake Bay, headed south for the Eastern Caribbean. We knew we were going to need a big awning. Because when we got to the tropical sun, we were going to need something to keep ourselves shaded. The awning that we were going to build, going to finish building, was a neatly stacked pile of pre-seamed and pre-cut panels, waiting, final shaping, and measurement, and cutting, and sewing. Somehow, though, when we were wearing beanies and gloves and, oh my gosh, socks, the importance of that awning was definitely not that clear. And also, we just had way too many projects to get done before we could leave the dock. If you've ever been in that final push mode, you know that it doesn't matter how long you've been working, there is always a scramble to get all the last minute things done. We needed to do things like install lashing eyes for the dinghy. We needed to install the hard dodger. We needed to stow all the provisions that I'd bought. And the list went on from there. The awning definitely could wait. And it did. And a week after we got to the BVI, 
we found a perfect little anchorage where not a lot of people go with calm seas, wide open space, and easy, flat, isolated shore access. Jeremy went ashore with that bundle of pre-made panels and he set it all up. There was enough space for him to set it all up, measure and mark what he needed to do. And then he set up our sailrite machine on the salon table and got to work. And a couple of days later, with many pauses for looking out the window and sitting up and enjoying the beautiful sunshine and the beautiful water and views that we had, just a couple days later, a big, gorgeous, shade-providing awning was done. And we were happy because we were no longer in beanies and gloves and socks, and instead were in t-shirts with sunscreen and big hats. This past winter, we took our recently acquired second boat, Mischief, and yes, we still have Calypso, on a small little shakedown to the Bahamas. After a frantic, frantic summer of remedying woes that had been left on that poor boat after more than a decade of neglect. Much of the work involved leak mitigation, making sure that we didn't have buckets of water coming down onto things like electronics or our bed every time it rained. And a lot of that work actually included replacing the wooden stanchions that are a part of our boat that hold the bulwark in place. These are structural. The bulwark is structural. The stanchions are structural. And the way that they're designed and built is that there is a, a large hole that goes through them with all thread that goes all the way through the deck. And so these are, they're bolted into place. And there's a cap that goes on to the, the hole where the all thread was. And those plugs often will work themselves loose and they were the source of a lot of leaks. Plus, there was a lot of rotten wood on those posts. Half of those 28 stanchions Jeremy replaced in the boatyard before we left. The important ones, i.e. the ones that were leaking visibly and badly or the ones that were leaking into important spots. The ones up in the forepeak in the anchor locker, if they leaked, that wasn't that big of a deal. If there was one that was leaking in the lazarette, again, not that big of a deal. But the ones in the chart table and over our bunk and where our clothes were, absolutely a big deal. We did prepare the other 14. So we installed 14 of them, and we left with the other 14 of them made, built, prepped, cut, marked, uniquely cut so that they fit in their particular spots because it's not just that you have 28 of these things on the boat, it's that each one of them has their own special angle where they sit on the deck. And we had those all done and coated in epoxy so that they were ready to be installed. That installation happened in various places in the Bahamas. We got south, we did some in Green Turtle Key, we did some more at Rock Sound, and we did the final ones in Pipe Creek when we were in the Exumas, waiting for yet another cold front to go blow by. The thing with both that awning and finishing off the bulwarks, yes, it was a lot of time out when we were cruising from actually being able to enjoy our cruise, but we were able to do it in a place that was beautiful. In between sewing sessions, there was an awful lot of enjoying that gorgeous, beautiful blue water, blowing up the paddleboard and going for a tool around the anchorage. In Pipe Creek, there was time that we spent going to visit with other boats and going to walk on the sandbar every day. We could not have done that in a boatyard in Virginia or Maryland in the middle of winter. Couldn't have done it. And so there's planned work that you do in exotic locations like this. There's unexpected fixes that you have to do, and that's just a part of boat life because things happen. But both things require a little bit of pre-thinking. If you're going to have unexpected fixes, you've got to have the parts and the tools that you need. If you're going to do a big project like we've done the last couple of winters, you've got to have all the parts with you. And maybe, if it's easier, you have them prepped before you leave. So while I don't like the phrase, cruising is just boat work in exotic locations, because I think that it's not. 
And if you are in a situation where cruising is just boat work in exotic locations, then I might invite you to change either the way you're cruising or how you're prepping your boat, or maybe your mental aspect of it, because sometimes that's what it is. If you feel that every day you're all you're doing is boat work, then cruising's tough. That would be really hard to do. But I do admit that the view at anchor is better than that in the boatyard. We're already starting to plan some projects that we'll have to do down the road. One of them involves maybe doing some repainting the decks. And we're going to make sure that we have the materials for that. But we'll get it done when we're in Panama. We can be sitting at anchor somewhere down there and working on our decks. And that will be much prettier than being in a boatyard, looking around as much fun as it is to see all the other boats that are also hauled out. I can't wait to share an anchorage with you when maybe we're doing boat projects, but hopefully we're not, and we get to just toast to our good fortune at being able to live this incredible lifestyle together. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love hearing from our listeners. We love it when you don't forget to subscribe in your favorite podcast app. We love it if you let us know that maybe we've helped you make boat life just a little bit better, because that's what the Boat Galley is all about. Have the most spectacular week.